नमस्ते एवरीबडी माई नेम इज़ योगी विवेक रावत एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस ऑनलाइन टीचर ट्रेनिंग कोर्स आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द प्रणायामा टेक्निक्स एंड देयर बेनिफिट्स तो आई होप यू इन्जॉय दिस कोर्स नमस्ते नमस्ते ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप यू आर गुड वेलकम बैक टू माई प्रणायामा सेसन लेट्स स्टार्ट टूडे सेसन विद द चैंटिंग ऑफ ओम वंस अगेन सिट कम्फर्टेबली ऑन योर मैट क्लोज योर आइज फ्रॉम here keep your spine erect bring your both palms together widen your elbow keeping your chest nice open take a couple of deep breath in deep breath out be totally aware of your breathing pattern again take a deep inhale oh rub your both palms together feel some warmness some positive energy between your palms take your both palms very gently towards your eyes observe feel this darkness the soothing effect transfer this energy to your soul to your mind very gently release your palms down open your eyes so in previous videos we were talking about some techniques some introduction or the introduction of pranayama some other techniques how they are going to be implemented in the practice in today's session we have this intensive technique of pranayama which is kapalabhati before this let me tell you that kapalabhati is not a pranayama kapalabhati is considered as a shat karma as a part of shat karma it is a kriya but since it has to do with the breath so sometimes we call it pranayama that is not wrong but to just clarify this fact that it is a part of shat karma it is not a pranayama so let's talk about this so kapala bhati kapala means skull bhati means shining so it is the meaning of kapala bhati skull shining so in this particular technique the inhalation is passive the exhalation is active and very forceful so our main focus is on our exhalation so our inhalation would be quite passive we will not be thinking about that you will feel that while we will just will be practicing so the benefits of this kapalabhati so before benefits i would like to share one more fact to you there are three versions of kapalabhati these three versions are vyut karma kapalabhati sheet karma kapalabhati and vat karma kapalabhati now the other two this is called this is very common vata karma kapalabhati which is your forcefully exhalation which is quite common like in a lot of pranayama sessions it is practiced and you can like practice it daily also but the other two forms of kapalabhati are not for beginners like beginners can try them uh, but i suggest you to just you know practice few other things before that and we shall be talking about that in the future so to not focus on that first just focus on this particular technique of breathing so the benefits of kapalabhati are it is since this is about the forcefully exhalation of 
uh, you know there are some strong exhalations so it is helpful in any kind of res uh, respiratory ailments it cures because it you know enhances the lungs the capacity of your lungs so it improves the respiratory conditions it reduces your weight also if someone is you know if someone has been suffering from obesity so it is quite good to perform this practice it helps to just reduce the body weight the extra fat in the body it enhances the lung capacity we have already talked about that it increases the heat in the body and it also improves the digestion since it is like there are some movements around the abdomen so it is said to improve the digestion power the digestion heat it increases the heat in the body it removes any kind of tiredness and it makes one active if you are feeling lethargic if you want to feel that intensive energy before any kind of activity any kind of program which needs intensive energy which needs some energetic attitude so it is very good to perform in the morning when you feel quite lazy and you want to perform you know asana this is very good practice to be performed before any sort of asana classes now there are some contraindications also of this practice those people who have already high bp problems they should be very careful while doing this and i say i my suggestion is try to go with the slow rounds try not to you know increase the intensity of this practice be very careful and you can just reduce the rounds reduce the intensity of this technique those women who are suffering from menstruation they can also be very careful while doing this uh, it really depends how they feel if they feel okay then they can perform it with the slow force otherwise you can avoid it and you can perform some other techniques some modification of this technique those people again who have heart problems they can also be very very careful while doing this any kind of hernia slipping disc ulcers stomach ulcers these kind of problems if you have you can be very very careful while doing this you can take a suggestion from your doctor as well uh, it also depends how you feel or how long have you been practicing this sometimes it happens that one has been practicing for a long time then they can perform it without any harmness but if you are performing it for the first time or if you are just a beginner if you have just begun this practice then i suggest you to just go slow and be very very careful so now we are going to talk about the steps of kapalabhati how it is going to be so again you can take a comfortable sitting position on your mat and you can also sit on your chair if your lower back is not in a well condition we have already discussed about this so sitting comfortably on your mat in any sitting cross leg position either sukhasana swastikasana padmasana even in vajrasana thunderbolt posture it depends if you are feeling comfortable in the posture keeping your spine nicely tall chest wide shoulder rolling back chin parallel to the ground crown of the head facing towards the ceiling now from here again you can practice some yogic breathing firstly for the balance for the evenness so that you can start from the even condition that's why there is samasthiti before asana there is yogic breathing some breathing awareness even ujjayi before you know any kind of intensive version or before any kind of main techniques there is a preparation if your body needs preparation your breath also needs preparation because your breath is not in a stable condition so from that evenness you start so from here just doing some round of yogic breathing using your three parts three dimension breathing 
and be totally aware of your breath. Now from here, again you can, if you, if it is too much intensive for you, if you are a beginner, you can just start it with a kind of modification. So you are not directly jumping into the main version of the practice. You are kind of dissecting it into two parts. So you can perform it while one nostril being closed and one nostril being opened. So we can talk about that later on, but firstly, the main version of this technique, sitting comfortably, firstly deep inhale, and softly exhale. Again inhale. Now from here, forcefully feel the contraction at your abdomen area and try to squeeze your belly in towards your spinal column in a forceful way. So the first round, we are always going to start it with a gentle approach. So in first round, you can just do 10 to 15 to 20 rounds, but in a slow manner. What I mean to say here, you're not doing your this breathing, this technique very rapidly. You can increase the speed later on in the second round, in the third round. But in the first round, you can just be very, very comfortable and be gentle towards your practice. So again, inhaling. You can keep your one palm just above your navel to feel this, you know, movement of your abdomen, how it is getting squeezed in, how it is coming out. So it is a contraction of your diaphragm, your abdomen. So how it is happening, you can have a feel of that. If throwing the air out with the both nostrils is a kind of challenging version for you, you can do that with your mouth open. So in that way, you can just have a nice and deep feeling of the contraction of your abdomen, that how it is, uh, what is the procedure, what is the correct way of doing this. So rather than doing it from the nostrils, you can do it from your mouth. So how it is, you can have a look again from here. Inhaling through your nostrils. Open your mouth. So make sure that when you are exhaling, you are throwing all the air out. Because if you will not throw all the air out in the next round, when you inhale passively, that would be quite challenging. So in the first round here, you are, you may be inhaling actively. But slowly, slowly, when you proceed towards the second round, second stage, third stage, when you do it fastly, in the main round, in the main version of the practice, you will feel that the inhalation is quite passive. And the exhalation is quite active and forceful. Your whole focus, your entire focus is on exhalation. The inhalation is taking place just because of, you know, the procedure, because of the equalness of exhalation and inhalation. So again, when you feel comfortable here, do this for 8 to 10 rounds. In the next, try to proceed towards the next round if you feel comfortable only. If you don't feel comfortable here, you can only be at the first round for a lot of days. Be consistent towards your practice. And then slowly, slowly when your core muscles would, be, would get strong, you will do it more effectively. Here, if you keep your eyes open, Again, you can keep your eyes closed or open, it depends on you. If you keep your eyes closed and you feel some kind of dizziness, if you have that kind of, you know, problem, you feel dizziness, then you can keep your eyes open. It's all right. It's doing again. Inhale. So in that way, you can just keep on increasing the round. So when you do it fastly, you will feel that how this method of passive inhalation and active exhalation would be implemented on your practice. So the fast speed, how it is going to look like, again, look at me. So 
So in that way, you can perform it 10 to 15 to 20 times again. Slowly, slowly, you can increase the round. You can take it to 50 to 100 to 150 to 200 rounds. It depends if it is doing too much for you. A slight dizziness, it would occur. After the, at the end of your practice, you will feel some dizziness, you know, some kind of whirlpool um, feeling, but that is okay if it is, uh, if it is in controlled. But if it is too much between the practice, you can come out of the practice for a moment. You can just do some deep breathing, inhale and exhale, and then you can move forward. You can continue your practice or you can move towards the second, you know, technique, the other technique of pranayamas. Now, the common mistakes here which happens in this practice uh, by the practitioners, uh, they commit this kind of mistake. They you know, tend to contract their face muscles. So in, in a way that when they perform this, they do like this, something like this. So they like contract the face muscles, which is a bad idea. Your face muscles should be relaxed. When your face muscles are relaxed, the blood is traveling very nicely through your veins to the brain also. But if you are contracting it while pranayama, while meditation, it is not going to allow you to focus to give you 100% to focus effectively. So keeping your face muscles relaxed and try not to move too much. Some people, they also lift their shoulders up, they move their shoulders, they make their spine round. So in that way, they can put so much pressure on their lower back and the movement of the shoulders, movement of the body part will not allow them to focus properly, to concentrate properly. So these are the common mistakes you need to avoid in order to gain maximum benefits of the practice. Kapalabhati is also said to not to be done lot of time daily. Like daily if you are doing so many, like so much in the morning also, in the evening also, before the sleeping also, if you are doing continuously for a long time, it has got bad effects because it is finishing your breath very soon. And the pranayama says that you should, you know, provide that longevity to your breathing. You should lengthen your breathing. So it should be done but with some other techniques as well. So I hope you have understood all the things, the common mistakes, the benefits, the contraindications, the steps, how to do it. Uh, again, the spine, since it is about the core muscles, the contraction of the abdomen. So if your spine is kind of weak, if your core muscles are weak, you should be very, very careful. Do not round your spine at any cost. You can adjust something underneath your hips in order to keep your spine straight if your hips are not that much flexible. So I hope it, it is quite informative for you. You have learned few things from here, few informative things from here. So again, let's finish today's session with the chanting. So close your eyes, sit comfortably, join your palms together. Inhale. Uh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Release your both palms down. Gently open your eyes. So, see you in the next session. Until then, just enjoy. Keep smiling. Take care of yourself, your family, your friends. Namaste. Namaste.